everything in my life I stumbled into. Is that right? I stumbled into. I never thought I would be producing films. My wife and I started out doing gospel plays and going on tour during gospel plays. We had no intention that we were going to ever do movies. We were trying to do plays and trying to figure out how to do that right and losing and losing money. And we went to Atlanta and, and just lost our shirts for the, the first play. And in the process of stumbling around, we finally figured out how to get the play kind of going good. And then I met this dude that I said, let's collaborate and do it together. And the dude was, uh, what was his name? Uh, T Tyler Perry, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard, I heard about him somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tyler Perry was fresh out of sleeping in his car. Right. And I was fresh out of money. <laughs> and so we got together and collaborated and did a play called Woman That Are Loose. Ruben Cannon was in the crowd and he saw the play and he said, I want to make it a movie. He said, I want to make it a movie. I didn't have, bear in mind, I didn't have no movie money. <laughs> movie and money both start with an M for a reason. <laughs> okay? When you have one, you got to have the other. But he said something to me that becomes the way business people think. They don't fail to do something because they don't have the money. He says, we'll raise the money. Let's do the movie. Listen to the difference in attitude. I can't do it because I don't have the money. He doesn't see money as an issue. If you see it as an issue, it'll be a stop sign. We put the money together and we did this little low budget film, film Woman Art Loose, and just on a whim, submitted it to the Santa Barbara Film Festival and won the festival. And all of a sudden, the movie that we were going to put on TV went to screen. You see how you're stumbling into it? Yeah. It's, it's not always that you planned it, but if, if you honor where you are with your best effort, even if it is not it, it will lead to it. So as you walk along, you stumble into it. You wouldn't be in this room if you didn't have a vision. Worry about the vision more than the provision. I find that the provision comes to the vision. A lot of people ask for provision who have no vision and, and money runs from blindness. Money runs from blindness. Yes, yeah, money runs from blindness. Money. Bishop, you might need to unpack that one. Okay. For, for some if there If there is no purpose, there is no provision. And well, I'm not talking about physical blindness, I'm talking about blindness so far as career and future. The first thing the bank wants to know is what do you want to do? Uh, anybody who's going to invest in you wants to see, hear what do you see? What do you see? When Jesus healed the blind man and touched him the first time, he asked him, what do you see? Because his response is based on his answer. So the man said, I see men walking as trees. He said, I'm going to touch you again. Until I clear up your vision, we can't leave this spot. The first time I went to the bank, it, it was amazing. They wanted a seven-year projection of, of our uh, company. And I thought, wow, I didn't know anything about business. I thought, what in the world do they want that for? I could write down anything. What they're really asking you is, have you thought through the future? That's right. They're asking you, can you see? Because if you can see, we will fund what you see, pro-vision. But if there is no vision, how can there be provision? So we, when we want something, ask God for provision. But you need to be asking for vision. Because if you get a clear vision and you're passionate about it, people support people, not ideas. So if you're not excited about it, why should I give to it? As a young boy, I was enthralled by airplanes and the wonder of whether I would ever embark on a flight that would carry me to new exciting adventures and a life of limitless possibilities. I came to know I had the power within me to soar, and that has made all the difference in my life. Flying for the first time is a lot like creating your own business, launching a startup, or establishing a non-for-profit organization. Both require a leap of faith and a willingness to take a journey of unexpected variables. In other words, both require a little bit of crazy and a whole lot of courage. Don't let fear hold you back from doing what you truly love. Commit to your vision and be the CEO of your future.
When God gives you an opportunity, instead of just jumping on the opportunity, you're supposed to see what it can be. I tell them all the time, God never made not one table. Yeah, I love this. In all of his years of being God, he's never made a chair. He's never made a table. He just made a tree. And the rest of it was up to us. <laughs> right. When God hands you a tree, imagine a table, a chair, imagine a wall in a room, imagine a log cabin, imagine what it can be, imagine what it can be, imagine what it can be. So I'm in South Africa and I'm on a safari and I'm, I'm, I'm really like tripping off of this safari and I'm out here with all of these big animals and stuff. And I notice the elephant is moving around. The elephant is strong and he's big and he's tough and his power is in his weight. And he throws his weight around. He throws his weight around. What can you do with him? Because he's so big. God made him big as a defense. The lion roars. When he roars, everybody is almost paralyzed in fear. Because God gave him his roar as his defense. The cheetah says, I can't roar like that, but I can run like the wind. The cheetah he goes running through the woods because God made him able to run because that's his defense. The eagle spreads its wings and soars into the air and says, I can't run, but I can fly. God let the eagle be able to fly because it was his defense. And I'm walking around in the jungle and I said, well, Lord, I can't fly like the eagle. I can't run like the cheetah. I can't roar like the lion and I can't throw my weight around like the elephant. What did you give man as his defense in, in the whole ecosystem of human, of, of life force? What did you give me? He said, I gave you a brain. Your brain is your defense. That's why God didn't make chairs. He only brings it halfway mm -hmm. and then lets you imagine, create, develop. Do you understand what I'm saying? The problem with church people is that we are taught that God makes furniture. So we pray and pray and pray. I want you to look around your life for trees, not tables. God's going to bring it within the reach of your mind and your creativity is going to take it the, the rest of the way and it's going to turn into apps and it's going to turn into Apple phones and it's going to turn into computers and it's going to turn into satellite systems in the heavens. Look at what all we were able to do. No other, no other creature, no other species has sent satellites up into the air, created smartphones. Look at what we did with our head. Why are we in church not using our head. It is not what you think about God that is holding you. It is what you think about you that is holding. Oh, they didn't. let me try it on them. It is not what you think about God that is holding you. You got great thoughts about God. It is what you think about you that keeps bringing you back down to playing the same role in the same movie over and over again, you will not accept God's script. God has a script for you to go by. You will not accept God's script because you are allowing weaknesses, mistakes, traumas, who didn't love you, who wasn't there for you, who didn't stand by you, to define you. And you are letting the enemy script you for the life Jesus died to give you. Let's talk about the eagles for a minute because the, the mother eagle, after sitting on the eggs, protecting it with her life until they hatch and going out and swimming and attacking prey and bringing back food until they grow, then turns around the same beak that fed them and the same body that warms them, takes them out to cliffs and throws them over the edge. <sighs> It is not that she has turned against her children, but she knows that they will never find their wings in safety. The eaglet learns to fly by confronting its scary place. And it's not even trying to fly. It's falling and flapping and thinking mama is crazy. <laughs> I'm calling Child Protective Services. 
I got to get out of this. <laughs> but in the process of falling and flapping and falling and flapping and falling and flapping and flapping and flapping and flapping Come on. and flapping and flapping and flapping. Thank you.